Hello, my name is Dr. Mario Romero. I have been a restorative dentist for 24 years, and we are here to share with you some tips and tricks on how to use or be efficient on using a rubber dam isolation. We're gonna start reviewing our basic armamentaria for a rubber dam isolation. I'm gonna start out with showing you the W2 clamp for premolars, the W3 clamp for molars, and the W8A clamp that I normally use for molars that are slightly broken down and that I don't have a lot of room for me to engage the jaws of the clamp towards the, towards the molar. I have a wedget. We have our rubber dam stainless steel frame. We have selected a six by six rubber dam, medium thickness. And we have our clamp forceps. When it comes to perforating our rubber dam using the Ainsworth rubber dam punch, I recommend selecting only three size of punch holes, the largest for the retentive clamp, the second to the largest for every molar, and the second to the smallest for every premolar or anterior tooth. A quick tip that I can give you is always attach the clamp to the rubber dam outside the patient's mouth. So what I normally do is I grab the clamp and I'm looking at the bow of the clamp. I put it underneath the rubber dam and I'm gonna set it right into that, that hole that belongs to the retentive clamp, which is the W3 that I'm using right now. I make sure that the jaws of the clamp are centered with the holes. And I'm ready now to take this clamp into the patient's mouth, holding the rubber dam in this way so that we can protect our patient. So our first step is gonna to be to attach this W3 clamp to our abutment tooth. So once the clamp, the clamp has been seated on the abutment tooth, the next step is gonna be Getting, making sure that you can release the rubber dam and place the rubber dam underneath the jaws of the clamp, just like we did right now. So now you're able to see the jaws of the clamp in the patient's mouth, surrounding the tooth and the rubber dam underneath the jaws. So the next step would be to attach the rubber dam to the rubber dam frame. And the idea is that now you can get any excess of the rubber dam out of the, out of the working field and away from the patient's face as well. Okay, so our next step is gonna be now to open every perforation to every tooth that we're gonna isolate. In this particular case, we're gonna go all the way to the mesial aspect of the central incisor. Once the rubber dam and all the holes have been opened, we're gonna use a floss and we're gonna just push the rubber dam apically around each tooth so that it's nice and secure. And a final step would be to hold the rubber dam on the contralateral side with a wedge. Okay, so to remove the rubber dam, we're first gonna pull the wedget out of its place. Now, using a straight scissor, we're gonna cut the septum between each of the perforations, stretching the, perforate, the rubber dam buckly. And now you're gonna go ahead and remove the clamp from the abutment tooth.
and then you can go ahead and just easily remove the rubber band from the patient's body. Well, this concludes our educational video for today. I hope that many of the tips and tricks that we've shared with you, you can start using them immediately in your practice, not only to improve the safety of your patients, but the outcome of your restorative procedures as well.